Hello, friends. How are you today? So good to be with you today. I've just got something that uh, I've been thinking about ever since this morning. I got up early this morning and I began to do a little just, well, just a little devotional time. And I was reading in the book of John, John chapter 10. Jesus, it was actually quite a quite a chapter as you begin to look there and you you begin to uh, see this dialogue that Jesus was having with the Pharisees. And um, he got a little contentious there a little bit. He began to claim a position that they didn't understand, nor did they appreciate. Uh, they thought he was making himself out to be God, and, and uh, they really weren't hearing the context of what he was saying. But Jesus said some things that I think even we, after all of this time, we still struggle over. I think we really have a problem with this, and I want to just read you uh, what I was reading this morning, and and I just want to talk to you for a few moments uh, about this. Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 27, he said, my sheep know my voice, and I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. Now, of course, (laughs) again, he's talking to this kind of hostile crowd here. And he says, so they will never be lost. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Verse 29 says, my father gave them to me and he is greater than all others. No other one can snatch them from his hands. Verse 30 says, and I am one with my father. Now here's where it got a little dicey. Once again, the people picked up stones in order to kill Jesus. But he said, I have shown you many good things that my father sent me to do. Which of them are you going to stone me for? Verse 33 said, they answered, we're not going to stone you because of any good thing that you did. We are going to stone you because you did a terrible thing. You are just a man and here you are claiming to be God. Now, here's the thing that just caught my attention. And I thought, I I need to, I need to talk to you about this because Jesus, here's what he said. Jesus said, in your scriptures, doesn't God say you are God's? You can't argue with the scriptures. And God spoke to those people and called them God's. So verse 36 said, so why do you accuse me of the terrible sin of saying that I am the Son of God. Now, that's, again, I I want to go back there to verse 34 because I think this is really important. Jesus replied, in your scriptures, doesn't it say you are God's? Well, you know, I'll tell you the truth. I've read that so many times, and that's a reference to Psalms chapter 82. And I know many times we've read that scripture also, But to really look at Psalms 82, which is where Jesus got that phrase from, um, what's the context? And do we dare go over there to read that? Do, Do we dare sit down and read what Jesus was reading in order to apply that scripture to our lives? That's a good question, isn't it? You know, a lot of times we can religiously look at things and read things But it comes down to the fact of positioning in the kingdom of God as to who you are. Most people don't know. One of the biggest problems that God has in in relation to his children is an identity problem. The first thing he did was call you a son, to call you a daughter. Revelation said that he washed you in his own blood. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So here's the, here's the catch, and this is the thing that I want to talk to you about, is the fact that the, the Psalms chapter 82, he is talking uh, or actually quoting where he says, doesn't, do, doesn't your scriptures say you are God's? Uh, but you ever think of that? So let's go over to Psalms 82. Let me just read this to you. And I want you just to listen to me very closely. Uh, I'm going to read Psalms 82 and then we'll, we'll go through this thing. Okay. Psalms chapter 82 verse one says, when all other gods have come together, 
the Lord judges them and says, so this is not referring to the Lord God here after this, but rather this is the words that the Lord God is saying to them. Now, remember, this was the scripture that Jesus referred back to when they picked up stones to kill him. Jesus used this scripture. So when all other gods have come together, the Lord God judges them and says, now he's going to say something, the Lord God of heaven and earth, El Shaddai, uh, uh, he's our provider, he's, he is the Lord, there is none other like him. But it says here, when all other gods have come together, the Lord judges them and says, how long will you keep judging unfairly and favoring evil people? Be fair to the poor and to the orphans. Now, this is God talking, the Lord God talking to these other gods. Be fair to the poor and to the orphans. Defend the helpless and everyone in need. Rescue the weak, the homeless, from the powerful hands of heartless people. None of you know or understand a thing. You live in darkness while the foundations of the earth tremble. And then here he says, I, the Most High God, say that all of you are gods and also my own children. Now that's what Jesus was quoting right there. But he said, you will die. Speaking to these people, he said, you will die just like everyone else, including powerful rulers. And he said, do something, God. Judge the nations of the earth. They belong to you. Now, here he is calling them God. Now, again, you have to go back to verse 6, what Jesus was quoting. I, the Lord God, the Most High, I say that you are all gods and my own children. So he said, do something, God. Judge the nations of the earth, for they belong to you. Now, I, I, I want to say something that gets a little uncomfortable I'm just asking you stand with me here for a couple of moments because when you begin to think of God's reference to other people or someone else as gods, it gets very uncomfortable because we've not even in many cases been able to even admit that we are the righteousness of God, sons of God. You know, probably every one of you know people that will spend time, well, I'm, I'm just unworthy. God, I, I'm not worthy. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm this, I'm that. I'm a dog. I'm, I'm a worm. I'm, you know, it's just all of those things to disqualify themselves. That's where most of them, so it's very difficult uh, for people to actually say out of their mouth, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. That's what I am. That's my identity. I am the righteousness of God. I'm in right standing with God as though sin never existed. There is not a nickel's worth of difference between my righteousness and the righteousness that Jesus carries because I'm not going according to my righteousness. Those are filthy rags, which basically is this. I'm trying to be like God without him. I'm, I'm going to approach God based on how good I can be. That's filthy rags. But see, I'm not coming to God based on that. I'm coming to God based on what Jesus did in my life. <laughs> my righteousness is of him. It is the Lord. It is, it is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that has made me what I am. Not my effort. Not of works, the Bible said, lest any man should boast. There's no boasting saying that I did this or I did that on any level. There's just no, it ain't going to happen because I, I can't. There's no way possible that I can be good enough. So I'm not coming based on my righteousness, which is filthy rags. I, I stand purely in Christ Jesus, which I am clothed in his right standing. Therefore, I stand before God as pure as innocent 
as right as Jesus himself. Now, that's hard to go, isn't it? Now, let me take it another level. When Jesus made this statement to these people, they were going to stone him because he said, I and my Father are one. Well, you're making yourself God. Well, that's what they said to him. You, you think you making yourself God because you said, I and my Father are one. So they picked up stones. They were going to kill him. And so Jesus refers to the scripture in Psalms chapter 82 when he said this. He said, your scripture says ye are God. So the fact is that God said that the scripture cannot be broken. I'm not in offense because I said I am one with God or I am equal with God. Now, is that saying I'm God? No, no. That there is, <laughs> that I am a son of God. I have His DNA. I have been born again. A lot of people say I've been born again. They don't even know what that means. They don't really embrace the fact that something really took place. Still cannot see the fact that they are changed. There's been a change that's taken place. I've been born again. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. All things are of God. Something is different. I'm a new creation. You understand that? And in that, my identity is revealed that I'm down in another position. And Psalms 82 was declaring that position when he was talking about all of you who are born again, who have been made the righteousness of God in Christ, and that he is referring not to God, uh, the Lord God, but he was referring to you as being God. He called you God. And that's what Jesus was being, uh, was going to be stoned for. It's because he said, he said, uh, this scripture is, is fulfilled in my relationship with God. See, he was referring to us and not himself. Now, let me go back and, and look at that again. It said, when all of the gods come together, the Lord God judges them. And he says, and he's not referring to the Lord God, he's referring to us. And he's saying this, he says, how long will you keep judging unfairly and favoring evil people? In other words, your position in the kingdom of God gives you a responsibility to the poor, to those that are in need. He said, be fair to the poor, to the orphans, defend the helpless, everyone in need. Rescue the weak, the homeless from the powerful hands of heartless people. None of you understand a thing, so as a result you'll live in darkness while the foundations of the earth tremble. And then he said, I, the Most High God, say that all of you are gods and you are my children. That is powerful. When you begin to think about yourself in light of that, it's a revelation. Now, I, I, I want to say, don't go put God on your, on your business card because that's not what I'm saying, because it's going to be misunderstood. And even what I'm saying to you right now, I'm sure somebody will, will pick it up and misunderstand it. But all I can do is refer to Psalms chapter 82, what, which is what Jesus referred to when he was claiming a position of oneness with God. He referred to Psalms 82, where, he's, where God said that all of you are gods. He's speaking to his children. He's speaking, this is a prophetic word to those that have been born again, those which when Christ comes and, and we are walking this born again experience, again, you are not just somebody that says, well, I'm an old sinner saved by grace. You know, nothing has changed in me. I'm just saved, which means I got, that's like saying I got saved from drowning. 
I got saved from being hit by a car. That is not what it's referring to. Your being saved doesn't mean that you just got saved from an incident that was going to take place. It's saying that you have been born again and you've been made a new creation. Again, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin. Well, did Jesus become sin? Well, according to the scripture, he did. And what happened then? That I might be made the righteousness of God in him. So I am literally the righteousness of God in Christ. He bore it all. He took all the judgment of God. When he was talking about there, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Uh, And I've given you this this teaching on several occasions, but it it certainly bears repeating here. When he was talking about that, if you'll notice in the King James Version, even the word men is in italics. In other words, there was some uncertainty in how to translate that. It was a, it was just a it was just a little bit it was just a little confusing, but the context there is judgment, not men. And when Jesus said, "I if I be lifted up, I will draw all judgment unto me," isn't that what happened? All the judgment of God fell upon Jesus. All every penalty, every guilt thing that you and I held, Jesus became. Again, 2 Corinthians 5.21, he who knew no sin became sin. That's what Jesus did in your behalf, that you might be made the righteousness of God in him. And if I could even say it, which is, is, is I, I hesitate to even say it because I know there's going to be people that choke over it, but all it is is a positioning word. Take it as this. But you take your position as a God, as a child of God, which makes you a God. Sam, I'm, I'm like I, we have this identity problem. Until you come to the place that you accept who you are, you will never walk in the fullness of what God has for you. As long as you've got this thing hanging over this, this sin consciousness, this awareness of unworthiness, you'll, ne- you'll never, you will never walk in the fullness of what God has for you. And, and I know somebody's going to say, Edmund's saying that everybody's a god. No, whoa, whoa, Newt. I'm going to do exactly, you know, <laughs> are you going to pick up stones and throw at me like they were going to do at Jesus when Jesus referred to the identical same scripture to where God said that? And he said, if, since God said this, he said, this, this can't be broken. This scripture cannot be, has not been broken. I'm simply saying about me what God said about me. Now, again, I'm telling you, don't go and put God on your, on your business card because <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But I am speaking to you from the standpoint of righteousness. I'm speaking to you from the standpoint of position to where suddenly when I begin to approach the need for change in something, I'm doing it from a standpoint of authority and not a standpoint of an orphan asking God, please do something. Now, listen to me. 90% of the prayers that are prayed is, please, God, please, God, please, God, please, God, do something. God, would you please do something? And he did. (laughs) He did. Uh, The cross was the place where it all took place. He did something. Isaiah 53, 5, pointed forward to the cross. Peter came along and pointed back to the cross. One said, by your stripes you are healed. And even before Jesus came, what Jesus did at the cross was so powerful that by faith they could reach forward into something that hadn't even taken place yet and receive the benefit of it. Now, how's that happen? I don't know, but they did. And then when you come over here to where Peter said, by your stripes, we were healed. Both 
are pointing to the cross. You, you understand that? So he did something. Now he's saying to you do something. Back back here to, to Psalms chapter 82, he, he said, when all the gods come together, the Lord God judges them and says, how long will you keep judging unfairly, favoring people? Be fair to the poor, to the orphans, defend the homeless, rescue the weak, the helpless from the powerful hands of wicked people. He's telling you, you from this position of authority need to stop whining and just begging God to do something and you go do it. You speak the word. I have to just take you back to what Malachi said. Malachi made this statement concerning righteousness. He said, when the sun of righteousness arises, healing is in its wings. Now, that word sun there is spelled S-U-N. It's not when the son of God, he, the sun. In other words, when the what does the sun do? It illuminates. When the illumination of who you are, of your right standing with God rises, healing is in the rays of that sun, of that, of, of that illumination. Deliverance is in the rays of that of the of that uh illumination when when the revelation of who you are becomes visible the power of God is manifest and that's the position you hold somebody said well Jesus was the son of God so are you so are you yeah you you can't you can't escape that you are a son of God as much as Jesus is a son of God because your righteousness is not based on anything that you brought to the table. As a matter of fact, Galatians said, if you are justified by anything that you have done, then you have fallen from grace. He said Christ is dead in vain. He didn't need to die if you think you can get there yourself. Good luck. You need to keep all of the rules. You need to keep all the law. You need if you're gonna if you're gonna be justified by one point, you're gonna have to be justified by all. I'm not saved because of what Jesus did. Plus, I do this and this and this. I you can't you cannot go there. I'm, I'm, that is such a slippery slope. Well, I'm saved by what Jesus did, and I quit doing this. I'm saved by what Jesus did, and I did this. Now, let me just tell you something. You, you don't bring squat to the table. You bring nothing to the table. You bring nothing to the table. All you do is believe and receive. Jesus did it all. My righteousness is found in him alone. It's not of works, again. It's by faith uh, by grace through faith, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You are not saved, delivered, made not one good thing because of what you've done. It is purely because of what Jesus did. I receive that, and all of a sudden, the power of God is manifest when I receive what Jesus did in my life, and I am born again. There suddenly... I, I used to, Jesus even referred to some of the religious people, and he said, you're your father, the devil. Well, they, they had his DNA working in them. We don't. I've been born again. I have the DNA of my father working in me. Now, what is the DNA of God? You really want to know what the DNA of God is? It's love. Now, that's another story altogether, and we could go through that, but I'm just telling you right now that, that I have been born again, and now I am positioned in the kingdom of God as a, as, a, as a priest before God, as a king before God. I am a son of God, and Psalms 82 refers to me as a son of God that I, God, he calls me God. And, and it's kind of like what Jesus said. He, he said, your, doesn't your scripture say ye are gods? Well, he was referring to Psalms chapter 82. Well, that refers to you and me. That referred to Jesus. And, whenever, and, and so this is the position that you're functioning from. 
See, somebody who understands this and has a righteousness consciousness, somebody who understands that, they function not from a earth to heaven, but they function from the viewpoint of from heaven to earth. I'm a citizen of heaven. Now, I'm here because I have a job to do. I'm, I'm my, my job to do is I'm operating as the body of Christ in the dispensation of the church. I'm doing something to fulfill John 3, 16. But I want you to know something that, that I am no longer of this earth. I am not, I'm not here. I am a kingdom of, of heaven. And I have a bill of rights. I have a constitution. It is the word of God. And that declares who I am and what God has made me to be. So the point that I'm making isn't for you to go around and call yourself God. But it is to function from that position of authority in whatever you're facing. You say, I just can't I just can't say those words. I understand. I understand. And and you're not trying to be you're not trying to declare something that, that you earned, and you're certainly not pulling the bonehead thing that Lucifer pulled, because it's not based on you being lifted up with your pride. It is our trust in Christ that has made us what we are. And so now I am, man, I am, I am here. I am here. So this is, this is what we're described uh, in, in this manner. And, and people couldn't receive it then because they're going to pick up stones and throw at him. And people can't hardly receive it now. It's so difficult for them to receive. And, and it's not clear that they comprehended who they were or what actually took place at the new birth, which is where the most people actually are at this point. I don't, I don't think most people comprehend what happened at the new birth. I, I truly, I think people don't know this. Wow. The new birth, again, suggests several things. And, and the first thing that the new birth suggests is who you have become. Man, can you receive that? Can you receive that? It's powerful. You're, you're not what you were, but you become something different. I am now the righteousness of God. I'm a new creation. I'm born of God. I am a son of God. And all of the authority of God is waiting on my command, is waiting on my action is waiting on me to judge fairly in favoring people, is waiting on me to be fair to the poor and to the orphans and defend the helpless and those in need, to rescue the weak. That's what, that's what the scripture is saying, and the homeless from the powerful hands of heartless people. But then he went down there in verse, verse, verse 6, he said, but the problem is, is none of you know or understand the thing. You're living darkness. Well, of course, and that's the way people are. They don't understand who they are. They do not understand it. They live in darkness. And he said, as a result, as a, as a result, uh, um, uh, the, the foundations of the earth just tremble. You have authority in your realm, but it's up to you to use that authority. You understand that? It's up to you, baby. I'm just telling you. So, so you need to, you need to stop. And I'm not saying don't petition the Lord because we are told to do that. Bring our needs to the father. But there also is a place to where you stand up as a son of God. And from the position as a son of God to where God would look at you and say, you are God. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous to say, isn't it? But that's what God said. And again, this is why they picked up stones to throw at Jesus. Yeah, but he's Jesus. Well, well, who do you think you are? And, and you, who you are is because of who he is and what he did. See, and, and I guess really that's what it comes down to. 
is the fact that you have to decide what you're going to believe. Because I'll believe a part of it, but I'm not going to believe the other part. I believe Jesus came, but I don't believe he did all of that for me. I believe, I believe I'm going to heaven, but I, I don't believe that I'm, I'm the righteousness of God. Well, you know, that's, that's, that, that is the reason why you get trampled. That's the reason why. This is the very thing that Satan tries to do is to, is to blind you to the finished work of the cross. And if he can do that, he'll shut your identity down and you'll find yourself waiting on God to do something when God's waiting on you to do something. Dear Lord, if you only knew who you are, wow, if only knew. Wow. It'd change your vocabulary. It'd change your attitude. Suddenly you'd walk into a problem situation with a little bit of swagger and you'd be going, we're not putting up with any of this nonsense. And you'd begin to declare through the name of Jesus and the authority of the name of Jesus of what's going to happen. See, through that name, he's given you power. And it's not just a suggestion. It's dynamos power powerful, powerful thing that he put within your grasp whenever you begin to declare the name of the Lord Jesus. Man, wow. There's so much more that we could go into, but I think I want you to take time to soak on this. And look at Psalms 82 in several different different uh, versions. Look at it. And you're, and you're going to find that verse 1, the Lord God makes a statement to the other gods. And he says to them, how long are you going to keep doing this? How long are you going to let this happen? How long are you going to let this take place? Wow. And then he quotes what Jesus quoted when Jesus was saying, I and my Father are one. He quotes that. He said, are you not gods? Can you <laughs> I know, I know. Believe me, I know. <laughs> We've all struggled with that. But can we just look at it and say, is it possible that the word of God is true? That's, that's a hard thing to do sometimes, isn't it? But the reason is because we've been taught for so long the opposite. So whose report are you going to believe? And whose report are you going to report? Choice is yours. But everything is going to respond to you based on that. All right? Okay. Glad you're with me today. Please take time to like, to share, and uh, to subscribe if you haven't. I think it would be very beneficial. And I'm very strongly uh, expecting uh, good things to happen in your life. I so much appreciate you being with me today. This is very important to me. Uh, as I always say, thank you. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for being my friend. I, I hold it as a treasure close to my heart. And uh, one of the great treasures that God gives me in this life is your friendship. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. So you have a great day, and I'll plan on seeing you then. God bless you.